This is a mass, um, I think this is in the thigh of a middle-aged adult or a young adult, actually. And this is kind of an unusual pattern, right? There's a lot of collagen here. And then these uh, kind of hyperchromatic spindle cells that are arranged in either vague kind of loose fascicles or almost like kind of cords or chains a little bit. See how they're kind of running in elongated rows? Again, with a really dense sclerotic collagen in the backgrounds. There was an area, oh, no, maybe not. I forgot to annotate it. There was an area I saw in here that had some necrosis locally. There is a little bit of necrosis here, some individual tumor cells. And then in other areas, the, two, the tumor cells kind of make a different arrangement. They kind of arrange in these tiny little, little tiny nests almost, or little circles that almost have a little space. Kind of, they look like little micro alveolar structures maybe, or you could even start wondering, are they making like vascular channels, right? They kind of are clumping and clustering together in a strange way, and then there's abundant, dense sclerotic collagen in the background. Does anyone have any ideas what this might, uh, might be? This is a, a kind of strange bird and relatively rare, but it's good to know about because it is an unusual pattern that might, you might not think of this tumor otherwise. Okay, these are the areas that are kind of these little tiny microalveolar or pseudovascular structures. See how they almost look like vessels? What would you do if you had this case? What stains would you order? Any takers? So someone thought about, could it be a vascular thing like epithelial hemangioendothelioma? It is not, but that's a great idea. And I think even originally when people first started describing this tumor, there was a, a thought that, you know, could these be vascular tumors, but they don't stain like vascular tumors. So all the vascular markers would be negative here. But I'll tell you what is positive. And see, these are pretty atypical. At low power, not, not obviously, because it's kind of hypocellular, it doesn't strike you right away as definitively malignant. But as you look around, you see a lot more atypia here, okay? This is positive for Desmond and MyoD1 and focally for myogenin. So this is actually a rhabdomyosarcoma, an unusual variant called sclerosing rhabdomyosarcoma, which kind of is lumped together currently in the current WHO with spindle cell rhabdomyosarcoma. So spindle cell and sclerosing rhabdomyosarcoma are important to know about because um, a lot of people are familiar with the other main patterns of rhabdomyosarcoma, but these are unusual and they don't look like the typical thing we think of rhabdo as looking like, right? I mean, you, would you look at this and think, oh, I should do a Desmond right away? Well, that's why Desmond is part of my basic workup panel. When I see a tumor and I think it's a sarcoma maybe or a malignancy and I don't know what it is, my initial panel usually includes Desmond, actin, actin's not the best, but it's helpful sometimes, Desmond and actin, S100 or SOX10, depending, and um, pancytokeratin. That's usually where I start. That can uh, help you a lot in deciding which road to go down if you're having trouble deciding how, what a tumor differentiation is. And uh, depending on the setting, I'll often add vascular markers too, okay? So um, here, this form of a rhabdo has a lot of sclerotic collagen in the background. It has pseudovascular channels or microalveolar structures. It can have cords and chains. That's the sclerosing form. The spindle cell end of that spectrum tends to have fascicles of spindle cells that look a lot like leiomyosarcoma or have the herringbone pattern, kind of like the fibrosarcoma herringbone pattern. So it's important to think of that. If you have something that looks kind of like a leiomyosarc, but it's a little weird, uh, consider could it be a spindle cell or sclerosing variant of rhabdomyosarcoma, um, especially in a child, right? If you think it's leiomyosarcoma in a child, always think of that, okay? So these kind of fall into a couple different groups. There's a, kind of a newer entity and some new data about it. So there's kind of genetically, there seem to be two different groups in this category. One is in really young kids or infants, okay? And those have a variety of different gene fusions. And I wrote down the list of genes. It's a long list. It's VGLL2, SRF, uh, NCOA2, TEAD1, CITED2, and I'm guessing that that's going to go on and have more genes added to it, but gene fusions, translocations, okay? That's in the infantile or pediatric form of the spindle cell sclerosing rhabdomyosarcoma category. Those tend to have a relatively good prognosis overall. In um, adolescents and adults, these tumors, instead of having a fusion, they usually have mutations of MyoD1. 
the myo, same myo D1 that we use as an immunostain, that gene is mutated, not translocated, but mutated. And unfortunately, those tend to have a worse prognosis. All right, and, and they can it rise in the head and neck commonly, sometimes on the extremities in kids, uh, they particularly are more common paratesticular. So again, if you see a fascicle spindle cell thing near the testes of a child, think about spindle cell rhabdomyosarcoma, okay? And um, usually my favorite stains for rhabdomyosarcomas of all type is Desmond and myogenin. I have found myoD1, it depends on the lab. I've had some labs where we really had a lot of problems with background cytoplasm staining, which made it very difficult to interpret. Um, my current lab actually has a really nice myoD1, but I like myogenin better overall, but this is one tumor where you need to know that myogenin is usually only focally positive in this tumor. MyoD1 tends to be the better stain in these tumors, in the spindle cell sclerosing rather than sarcoma form. So if you have them both, you can do both, but just be aware that myogenin often is only focally positive in these. And of course, Desmond should stain them. So just know about this unusual variant of rhabdomyosarcoma that looks an awful lot like a vascular tumor in some cases. And I don't have one of the spindle cell variant ready to show you, but you can look up some pictures online and they really do have a very fascicular pattern. So important to know about these and, um, and keep them in mind. And sometimes the collagen in these can be so dense that it looks almost like osteoid. So you wanna make sure that you, you, know, you could start worrying if you didn't know, you could start thinking, man, is there osteoid production? Because remember, osteoid is dense collagen. So dense sclerotic collagen and osteoid, yes, they both can have overlapping features because they're both made of the same thing. So that can be really challenging, but that's gonna be a topic for a, a different video.